well. I've seen an awful lot of stuff in medicine change. I've seen incredible, explosive, and um, uh, beautiful science come about. I've seen in cardiology, heart pumps being developed and stents being deployed. I've done a lot of firsts in cardiology because I was lucky enough to be there doing that. But what we're gonna talk about tonight, in my opinion, is the greatest discovery of my 50 years in the medical profession. And that is the discovery of the NRF2 pathway and our opportunity to help people uh, with the products that the Life Vantage Corporation makes. I will tell you that 50 years ago, I went to my first biochemistry lecture. And when I sat in that lecture room, by the way, in case you're wondering, the two beautiful girls in back are my daughters. Now, there are a couple more back there in case you see the pictures. In fact, the one on my, on my shoulder over here is getting married in, in a week, so I've got to go up to D.C. and escort her down the aisle. But my, my first biochemistry lecture, I, I listened to a Nobel laureate biochemist who later became president of the International Society of Science for 20 years say to us in the lecture, we know how our cells make energy. And then he described this beautiful thing called the Krebs cycle and how we produce ATP. Now, if you're not versed in what ATP is, I'll tell you very simply. It's ATP is to our cell what gasoline is to our cars. If you burn gasoline, you get energy. And if you burn oxygen, and you combine it with food at our cellular level, you get energy and that energy is called ATP. And like the gasoline engine, we not only get the energy, we get some side products, some of them we don't want at all. And the side products in the cell are called free radicals. And those free radicals are what we're talking about today. Well, Dr. Handler, who made that statement about here's how we make energy, made the most important statement thereafter, which went right over my head. I really didn't know what the gentleman was talking about. And he said, but we don't know how to deal with the side products. That's yet to be determined. Well, almost 50 years later, it was determined. But before that, it was Another Duke-trained biochemist by the name of Joel McCord, who by now you all know the name and are very familiar with Dr. McCord, one of the most celebrated biochemists of his generation. Dr. McCord discovered superoxide dismutase. And what happened was he said, gosh, this is a powerful antidote to those free radicals. And I note that Every life form that has anything to do with oxygen contains SOD, superoxide dismutase. And indeed, he said, there must be a relationship between the plant life and us that has something to do with the production of SOD and the use of oxygen and its other molecules that are either produced or used up in the process. And as he went through his research with he and his colleagues, they found superoxide dismutase, in fact, in every living form that has to deal with oxygen. And you know, we don't live in isolation on this planet. We live in a biosphere that contains all the plant life, all the animal life. And if you don't step back and look at it that way, you'll miss the big picture. The way we all evolved uh, demanded that if we were gonna live out of water and on the ground, we would have to utilize oxygen. And the plant life produces the oxygen for us. The vast majority of the oxygen we have in our atmosphere comes from that. And so we use the oxygen and we do them a return favor. We give them carbon dioxide. And there's that whole cycle that uh, Dr. Handler talked about in which uh, the Krebs cycle in which we produce energy and utilize oxygen and produce carbon dioxide and make ATP. Well, if that's true, Dr. McCord reasoned, 
we must be able to neutralize these free radicals because we take in certain plants. And I'm sure your grandparents and your parents tell you, eat this and eat that because it's good for you. They didn't quite know why it was good for us, but they certainly knew it was good for us. So let me step back with you in, in time and, and understand that if you produce ATP and you have free radicals, um, why is it that at some point in time that becomes a problem to us human beings? Well, it turns out that superoxide dismutase and other antioxidants are also made in our body, catalase, and uh, you know the you know the others that are that are there in your literature. So, if that's true, then these products must have something to do with the free radicals and protecting us. And in fact, it was discovered that the antioxidants produced by our cells have a powerful ability to grab those free radicals, neutralize them get rid of them. No foul, no harm. So to be sure you understand what the free radical is, it's just a byproduct that is unstable because part of its outer electron shell has been used up. That sounds very fancy. All it means is it's unstable. It's a fractured molecule. And superoxide dismutase can marry with it, neutralize it, and take it out of the potential for harming us and there's the key. If you do not neutralize the free radical with the antioxidants that our cells produce, we get an injury because the free radical will attach to anything it possibly can in order to be stable. Well, if that's the case, then why is it we have you three beautiful ladies whose face I see on the screen becoming so gorgeous to a certain age. And when you get to be about 90, you'll turn around and say, what happened? Well, what happened is you continued to drink the fluid called oxygen. You kept taking it in and you'll keep taking it in till the day you're gone. And oxygen, of course, allows us to live, make our energy, run our cells, but in a very narrow range. But in fact, oxygen is also that thing that produces for us the free radicals, the use of the oxygen. So as we get older and older in age, we're not protected like we were when we were in swaddling clothes. We're not in mom's arms and drinking mom's milk and getting all the best foods. We then go out in the world and we're exposed to the hamburgers of the world, the McDonald's, and the pesticides and the chemicals and the pollution in the air, and we get more and more free radicals into our system to the point where the cell is working overtime, making more and more antioxidants. But when those free radicals exceed our ability to neutralize them, then we have that condition that you know as oxidative stress. So that's the definition. Free radicals in excess of our ability to neutralize them is oxidative stress. So what happens when we have oxidative stress? We get injury. And if we get injury at the cellular level, then what happens is the body says, wow, somebody put a dent in our castle wall. We better go fix it. So the command center, the nucleus, sends out a bunch of messages and we produce a change in our cellular mechanisms to stop making as many antioxidants and make a whole lot more inflammatory molecules. And that's the body's first line of defense. Make inflammatory molecules because they will go to the site of the injury and at the site of the injury, they will try to surround the injury, wall it off, heal it, and hopefully make the repair perfect. Well, if you went to the surgeon and had your appendix out, you would look down at your skin and see a scar. The reason that scar got there was that you had an injury and inflammation occurred. 
and the body repaired that injury. And that's my way of telling you that every time you have an injury that leads to inflammation, what you get is a scar. That, my friends, is the very definition of aging at the cellular level. So one scar replaces a little piece of the cell. Multiple scars start replacing the cell. You replace lots of cells, and what do you get? You replace the organs. And so if you want to ask me today, some 50 years after I started this, what's this all about? We have found out and now understand the very mechanism by which the cell is protecting us by making molecules called inflammatory molecules, but the end result is aging. And every time that happens, we are not only aging, we're producing chronic changes in our body and our cells, and that's the definition of disease. And so if that's what it's all about, then the question is, well, why in the world did this happen and how can we regulate it and what can we do to influence that whole thing? Here's where the magic comes in. The discovery of the NRF2 protein pathway was that it is very important in sending the proper message to the command center of what the cell is being asked to make. So think of it this way. Think of the cell as a factory. And in that factory, you have a command center. Uh, and that command center is the boss. He gives out the orders of what's going to happen in the factory for that day. But he can't do it alone. And so he sends his messages through a foreman. When the foreman is looking at what's going on in all of the chemical reactions in the cell, and that foreman communicates with the command center, the boss, and says, here's what's going on. We're making plenty of antioxidants. We're neutralizing all the free radicals. We're okay, boss. But a day will come when that messenger or foreman has to send the message that says, oh my goodness, we're being overrun. The Huns are at the gate. We got to turn some of our machinery back to making antioxidants and not inflammatory molecules. That's NRF2. NRF2 is a protein that's stationed in the cell that is taking in these uh, reactions, looking at what's being produced, looking at what's happening, and can directly communicate with the nucleus to tell it that we need to change the fact that we, at one time, were in need of making lots of inflammatory molecules and we sacrifice making antioxidants. So let's turn the machinery around and let's go make antioxidants again. NRF2, when stimulated, when freed from its anchored position in the cell, communicates that message exactly to the nucleus, and the nucleus puts out the host of commands, molecules, genes, and enzymes to make life preserving and life promoting. Um, molecules. So the discovery of the NRF2 answered the question that Dr. Handler posed 50 years before to me. My goodness, now we know how to deal with the side products. We know that if we can stimulate NRF2, we will turn the machinery around in such a way that we'll start making millions of molecules of antioxidants per second. Now, you'd have to eat actually the whole building I'm in of blueberries to get that kind of reaction. Nothing is as powerful as our cells in doing what it was made to do and what it evolved to do. So, if that's the case, what makes protandum so important? Protandum is a compilation of those plants you and I evolved in. You and I in this biosphere. And those particular five plants were sorted out from uh, Dr. McCord's research after putting together several thousand, I believe, molecule combinations and found that this particular combination of five 
foods which we have in abundance in our biosphere are capable of going to the NRF2 molecule, activating it so that it can go to the nucleus and tell it exactly what should be done. That's magic. That's, that's powerful, powerful information. That is the ability to retard aging, the ability to delay chronic disease, the ability to preserve the normal function of cells for a longer period of time. Now, mind you, I'm very optimistic about this, and I can tell you that I, I was a, absolutely incredibly overwhelmed when I learned this, learned this science. Because you see, before that, I was spending my time in the lab cracking plaques, putting in stents, sending people to surgery, and dealing with a problem, not dealing with a solution. So I went and looked at all the science and realized that I had just learned, to me, the most important discovery, perhaps in the history of medicine, one of the top three or four, and in my career, uh, in my career, certainly the most important of all. Now, if that's true, then protanda must be very useful in patients. So being a little bit from Missouri, you know, that's a state we Americans say, you got to show me. I took the first 100 patients and I said, well, if inflammation is the problem and protandum can activate NRF2 and that will decrease inflammation, I ought to be able to measure that. So I took 100 patients in my practice. I drew all their blood markers before I started them on protandum, measured all their inflammatory molecules, and then checked them again 60 to 90 days later. What do you think I found? Every single one of them improved. Their markers of inflammation came down. Well, you know what? Uh, I also <laughs> have a very allergic state, my own health. I don't mind sharing with you. Really outlandish kinds of results in my blood work. So I took protanum, and I confess to you, and I want you to understand this because you have to be able to tell your potential friends and neighbors and family what it might mean if you take protanum and get a little sick. Well, I got very sick. I had such a terrible reaction that I stopped the product three times. Finally, I put on my big boy pants, as my nurse practitioner would like to say, and I stuck it out. And my markers of inflammation and allergy all started coming back down to normal. What was happening? Well, we activated NRF2, and we made that molecule turn on our production of antioxidants. So we were having this incredible chemical war in which we were detoxing by getting all the free radicals out of the system. And that happens to patients frequently. So if you have uh, individuals, customers, friends who take protanum and experience a little nausea, a little reaction, encourage them just to keep going because it will go away. Today, I take it twice a day. Don't even know I take it. Now, that's very important for you to understand. It's important to know that if we've got a lot of inflammatory molecules and a lot of free radicals and we want to neutralize them, uh, we will, in fact, neutralize them with protandum and you may get a little side effect, which will last maybe one, two, three weeks, and then it's all gone. Well, I know all of you probably drive a car, and I would be willing to bet that all of you probably take your car in for checkup every so many miles. Well, if not that, your motorcycle, and maybe in Australia, your kangaroo. But let me tell you this. You don't take in your mitochondria, do you? Well, what, what is a mitochondria? The mitochondria is that element in your cell that actually produces the energy, the ATP. And it's working 24 seven, nonstop. And we never take it in to get it checked. We don't go in for a 25,000 mile checkup. Well, you know what? They discovered that there is a way for us to check on the, the, uh, the mitochondria 
and those mitochondria can be repaired and augmented in numbers by another incredible molecule that's in our cell that we call NRF1. So now you've heard about NRF2. NRF1 is a similar molecule that when stimulated sends a message to the nucleus to send out those things that are going to repair our mitochondria that have been working so hard and produce more of them so that our energy levels increase and we will feel and do better. And that's part of the whole process. So as you think about these products, you have to think about the fact that they all are geared to genomics. They are taking food substances that react with our genes and our cells to bring about reactions that produce good health, decrease aging, and decrease the rate of chronicity of disease. That's why we've got a skin product, because your skin product is, you know, that's the skin's the most exposed to oxygen, so we get a lot of antioxidant changes. Um, we, we take the Axio because it also activates NRF2. And so NRF1 and NRF2, Axio, the skin product, the skin line, they are all activators of this system. Now you can see why I've been so excited about it. I now have about 3,500 patients on the product, ProTandem. And I can tell you they all generate and they all do well because they generate better health and, uh, and their markers of inflammation fall and their sense of well-being improves. Having said all this, I think that I must tell you that allopathic medicine, that means mainstream medicine, has not been a, a very receptive society to using nutri nutraceuticals. But in the past five years in particular, and in particular, the things that have happened with our company's products. The entire medical world is turning its attention to nutraceuticals. And I wanna share with you two more pieces of data and then I will be willing to answer some questions. The first is, if you had multiple sclerosis and you were trying to prevent multiple sclerosis from recurring, pharma came up with a very powerful medicine. And that medicine has been shown to decrease the rate of recurrence and relapse in multiple sclerosis. And in the paper that was published by Pharma and the researchers and scientists who wrote the paper, there's a very clear statement and a beautiful graph that says the following. The product ProTandem, which consists of natural occurring herbs, is twice as powerful as our product. Now think about that a minute. You can't beat nature. You can't beat nature and evolution. And so that particular paper has now led to so many patients taking ProTandem instead of the $60,000 a year drug in America, taking ProTandem at $40 a month in our country. I'm not sure what the price is in Australia. That's a powerful piece of information, but here's something even more important for you to understand. Because I told you that free radicals cause injury, injury causes inflammation, inflammation always brings a scar. They took ProTandem, the National Institutes of Health Aging Division, and studied it with several other products and drugs from pharma to see what the effect on aging was. And for the first time in the history of the research, protandem was shown to extend the life of the laboratory animal. And if you think about it, that makes sense. If you can stop the inflammation, stop the scarring, stop the replacement of normal cells with a scar, then you're gonna extend aging or life when you're gonna decrease um, the aging process. So I can, I can simply say that I've tried to give you an overview of why I think uh, ProTandem and the products of LifeVantage are so powerful. 
It's because they're based on absolutely pristine science validated across the globe by multiple universities, many scientists, many researchers, and we're using genomics now to be able to uh, produce excellent results in health and uh, sense of well-being. So I hope that this has been helpful to you. Not too complicated, I hope. Tried to make it in layman's terms. And I will uh, think less and live more, according to Charlotte's uh, sign there. Uh, and, and, and I want to do that with pro tandem. I'll think less and live more. So I'm open to questions if you all have uh, something you'd like to ask me. <clears throat> Dr. Maniscalco, thank you so much. Um, wow, I know I've learned so much this morning. Um, thank you so much for being here with us. We have many, many people on the call and so many questions. So I've just picked it. Maybe we'll go through three questions if that's okay with you. Um, everybody on the call, please let me um, first state that we, as you all know, with Life Vantage, we cannot claim that ProTandem Pro -tandem will cure, heal, prevent, or mitigate any disease. So please um, have that knowledge in your mind as we talk further. Um, so the first question is if a medical specialist asks, where is the proof that ProTandem is a NERF2 activator? What would you say to them? I'm sorry, repeat that, if what? If a medical specialist, like a health professional, asks you where is the proof that ProTandem is a NERF2 activator, what would you say to them? Well, I would tell them that they need to uh, open their mind and then go to PubMed and look at pubmed.gov slash ProTandem and they will learn that there are 24 peer-reviewed scientific studies that validate everything I've told you today. Perfect, succinct answer. Thank you very much. So helpful. Um, the next question is, what makes ProTandem different to natural NERF2 activators? Well, ProTandem is a, na is a natural uh, NF NRF2 activator. The difference is that there are many, many substances in our biosphere that can have an effect on NRF2. Uh, the, the difficulty is finding that which is the most powerful, that which is the most uh, capable of activating the NRF2 pathway. And uh, you might also realize that the studies were done, that they took the individual five components, each of which had some tiny effect on NRF2, uh, and could not possibly produce the activation uh, of NRF2 as when you put them together in a certain combination. So though there are other substances in our universe, in our biosphere, that have antioxidant activation uh, properties, none have proven to be anywhere near as powerful as the combination that Dr. McCord put together called ProTandem. Wow. Um, okay, the questions are rolling in. I think this is a really interesting one. Can you over-activate NRF2 pathways? Yeah, like most things in, in biology, uh, if you suppress something too much, something else will pop up. So there is a cyclic, um, a cyclic uh, production of uh, glutathione and the antioxidants in our cells. So we know that uh, it's probably best from all the data that has been accrued to date that you don't take more than twice a day pro tandem. That is, you don't want to get it so constantly activated that you are suppressing other things that could be detrimental to, to your system. So uh, there is a cyclic event. You can read about it. It's very complex. But we, we have learned that uh, twice a day is probably a maximal uh, frequency of the use of protandem. Excellent, thank you. Um, what's, what's the easiest, if someone can jump on mute, please. Uh, what's, what's the easiest way to explain the difference between NERF1 and NERF2 when, when sharing with individuals? Well, I think that the, the easiest way is to say that NRF2 is a messenger protein that allows the nucleus to recognize we need to produce more and more antioxidants. NRF1 is a messenger protein that 
tells the nucleus we need to produce and repair more of our mitochondria, the actual energy uh, manufacturing unit. Two different pathways. Right. Okay, let's, let's just do one more question. Um, this is incredible stuff, guys. I hope you're getting this all down because this is going to help you all grow your businesses. And for the guests in the room, wow, this is incredible information. Um, okay, so let me see here. What, would you have an idea of one of the strongest review articles? Like, the, Is there a favourite review on the power of pretandum that you could share? No, I don't think I don't think there is a very powerful review article. I think uh, I want to make a comment, and then Pamela, you were very uh, appropriate in saying we don't make a claim about diseases. Yes, but that's why I gave you the cyclic event of injury leading to inflammation because all disease comes from that. So therefore, any <laughs> oxidation or therapy is important. So oxidative stress occurs in every one of us. Therefore, it's an appropriate uh, thing to, uh, to approach uh, uh, from a genomic point of view. Uh, now, is there a review article? No, but I would recommend to you that you do two things. One, Dr. McCord has a wonderful YouTube video on the topic I've just discussed. And um, I think if you look at his two or three pathways, uh, two or three YouTubes, you will get a great deal of information. One of my favorites, of course, and one that was of particular interest to me as a cardiologist was that uh, we do an awful lot of bypass surgery in this world. And uh, the incubation of a vein graft with a low oxygen tension uh, produces no harm to the vein. But the incubation of that vein with a high oxygen tension, which is what happens when we do a bypass, we put it on the high oxygen side of the circulation, uh, led to the veins being uh, uh, thickened and ultimately blocking. But when you pre-treated it with protandum, it blocked that whole thing. There's a fascinating article. So if you're talking to a cardiovascular specialist or someone with cardiovascular interest, that's an important paper. It's called the Ohio State Study. But I would, I would probably point you towards Dr. McCord's uh, YouTubes and, uh, and the PubMed articles that you can download fairly easily. Fantastic, thank you. Um, look, there's a there's a lot of questions rolling in. Let's just grab a one, another one if that's okay. How can um, Nerve Two help people with MS or rheumatoid arthritis? I know it under it reduces inflammation. Is there anything specific that it does other than that, or is that the most important thing? Well, that's very specific because the the relapses occur mm. in any disease when you have more oxidative stress. So to the point of reducing oxidative stress and reducing inflammation, you will reduce uh, the amount of relapses and progression in both rheumatoid and arthritis, uh, osteoarthritis, and, and in uh, multiple sclerosis uh, as well. Because multiple sclerosis is an inflammatory entanglement of the, of the neurons. So, and you know the, 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 the studies that have been done with the protection of the neuron with protandum are very powerful studies that indicate it's, uh, it's, it's excellent, excellent effect on, uh, on doing that as a protective mechanism. Wow, is it, let me, let me throw one more at you because you answered them so succinctly. Um, and this will be our last question, guys. Um, can protandum reduce scarring from a quadruple bypass? Scarring, no. Once you have a scar, you always have a scar. And uh, we cannot, we cannot uh, do away with a scar. What we can do is we can uh, ameliorate and prevent scar from occurring if we, if we treat the inflammatory process early enough. So uh, the answer is no, we can't affect scars at all. Okay. Okay, I think we better wrap it up and let you enjoy your evening. Dr. Maniscalco, th Scalco, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I can see everyone's there writing their little notes and um, we've, we've certainly learned a lot. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you to all our guests on the call. Thank you to all our distributors across Australia and across the globe. Um, we'll see you tomorrow and look, have a wonderful day, a wonderful night wherever you are in the world. Well, thank you. And if any of you are in Melbourne and you run across my dear friend, Dr. Harry Mond, 
MLND. He is an icon in cardiology. Give him my, my biggest, biggest hello. Thank you, and I appreciate being here. Good night. Thank you. Yeah.